paint. And it's okay if you don't get every single nook and cranny. We just want to have a, a little base, right? And I usually paint real fast. <laughs> so don't freak out. If it takes you a little bit longer to tap, cover everything, you just work at your pace, okay? Everybody still doing good? Not freaking out? So we just want a blue base all over, like that. And you can see I go pretty fast, right? But that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you see some of the brush strokes through, that's fine because you're gonna cover this blue with the rest of these paints, if that makes sense, right? All right, so I'm gonna wait a few minutes for everybody to catch up painting their canvas in one color. And then we have to wait just a few minutes for it to dry. And sometimes I'll use, it, I'll, I'll use a hairdryer to make it go faster. That's a trick that artists use. You can just blow dry your, your canvas and then it'll be dry and ready for the next, for the next um, amount of paint that you wanna throw at it. Well, while we're waiting for everybody to catch up, um, I could show you a few other pieces that I've done in the past. Here's one that I did of sheep, and I did the same thing here. I painted the whole canvas blue first, and then I went over it with different colors, which was a lot of fun. And let's see what else I could show you. Lately, I've been really, um, into painting over paint pours. I don't know if you all have done a paint pour before. Um, that's a lot of fun too, but it's, it's a bit messy and we're not gonna do a paint pour today, but I've done paint pours and then painted over top of them. For instance, this is the paint pour and then I painted this figure on top of it. So I do very, a lot of very different things. I also paint portraits. Let me show you a portrait that I did. Okay. And I, and I paint almost exclusively in acrylics. So most of my work is in acrylics. But once in a while I also do watercolors because I think they're fun. So here's a watercolor that I did. Okay. And the best thing if you, if you wanna get better at art is to practice and to do a lot of sketching. So usually I do a lot of sketching on the side. If I'm sitting in a waiting room, I will, I will um, sketch things. I'll sketch maybe a horse or I will sketch, let's see. I don't have any examples here, but I'll sketch different things just to practice my proportions and everything. And I understand one of your badges um, is all about doing perspective. And this piece actually has a lot of perspective. I, you can tell there's the hills in the front and the trees, and then there's the houses in the mid ground. And in the distance, you can see the mountain range and the clouds, right? So. You, once you've done this painting, you will have covered that part of your badge. Um, also, you'll be drawing on either paper or canvas, which is another part of your badge, I understand. And you'll be doing shading. You'll be painting a, uh, in an imaginary place. This is completely out of my imagination, based on reality though, because as you can tell, it's hills and trees and a house and a mountain range. And um, I think you'll also be showing off your masterpiece at the end. 
So that also covers one of the requirements in your badge. So hopefully you can knock that badge right out. <laughs> All right, so see if your paint has dried. Mine is still a little bit damp, so I'm gonna have to wait. But basically what we're gonna do, once this is just dried up a little bit more, and you can also use a paper towel and just fan, fan your canvas back and forth a little bit like this to make it dry a little faster. But once it's dry, we're gonna use a piece of chalk. And in this case, I'm gonna use a dark piece of chalk so that I can see it, so I can see my outlines. And I'll use this piece of chalk just to draw some of the pieces that I need to have in order to complete this. Okay. And sometimes you have to be careful what color chalk you use. For instance, I've learned that this color, this purple color, has a lot of dark purple pigments. And if you're painting something that's yellow, boy, that yellow will turn into something different because it picks up some of the pigments from the purple. <laughs> so you learn all kinds of things when you, when you start painting a lot. Angela. Yes. Uh, there is a request um, to please wait a little bit. I think some of the girls are still catching up. Okay, sure, we will wait. In the meantime, I can show you other things, right? <laughs> so as I was saying before, I've been, also, I've been dabbling with all kinds of paint pours. And this was a paint pour I, I did. Um, and then I painted a huge Ferris wheel over top of it. It's kind of cool, right? So you see, there's a lot of things you can do with acrylics. Here's another one with a Ferris wheel. So it was a paint pour and then a Ferris wheel over top of it. But sometimes I'll just paint just with acrylics. For instance, I painted this dark street scene. This is all in acrylics on canvas. So I was very intrigued by the lighting, you know, and the perspective. I don't know if you can all see that. It all ends up in this narrow part back there. It makes it look like the street narrows and, and, um, in the distance, I imagined that there was a street festival, maybe a party going on, something we haven't seen in a while, right? <laughs> in fact, I've been traveling in my mind to all kinds of places, and Europe is one of my favorite places to go. And here's another European city with bright lights and colors. I like bright colors. Are there any questions so far? Anybody stuck? Sophia has a question. Yes. Sophia, are you unmuted? You now. Um, do you suggest icing instead what? of chalk? Instead of chalk, chalk. If you don't have chalk, do you use something else? Well, sometimes I'll use a pencil. You can use a pencil, uh, just a, a regular pencil. And I also have um, these special white pencils that look like this. And I use those because they have a finer point than chalk. You can also use charcoal, but sometimes that can get messy, <laughs> as you can imagine. So does that help you? You can definitely use a pencil if you don't have chalk. Looks like Julia B also has a question. Uh-huh. What color chalk do you need? 
Mine is gonna be purple so that I, I, I can see it better on the, I don't know if you can see it as well. I could also try white. Maybe white actually works better in this case. I don't know if you see it. Do you see that? Yeah, I think I'm, I might stick with white since you know, I'm learning also that these Zoom virtual classes are a lot different than a real life class. I don't know what it is about the cameras. They don't show things the same way. Is the majority almost at the same place where I'm at? Shall we move on or shall we move or shall we just wait a little bit? It shouldn't be a stressful thing, right? <laughs> it should be fun. <laughs> so I don't want to rush anybody along. And we do have a nice amount of time. Okay, I see there's a couple of minutes still needed. So if, if you find yours is still damp, that's okay. Use your paper towel maybe and fan it a little bit like this. That'll help it too, to dry faster. So the benefit about covering your canvas with a layer of paint is, is that once you go over it again with another layer of paint, you will pretty much cover all the white spots that are underneath. And it becomes very saturated, beautiful painting. Sophia has a question. Yes. And that was accidentally, but I want to tell you, it's really funny that you like um, your I believe my, because I live there. You live where? In Europe. In Europe, you did. <laughs> specifically, where you live? Where I, in Europe? Germany. I live in Germany. In Germany. Well, guess what? I am from Germany. That's funny. Not your German. Uh -huh. Hello. Wie geht's? Sprichst du Deutsch? Yeah, and she is. That's awesome. Good for you. Germany. No, where is she from? I wonder in Germany. Yeah, I'm from Germany originally. I was born in a very little place near Hanover. Ah, cool. Sophia's dad is German and we live in Germany. Me too. And fabulous. So are you beaming in from Germany right now? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Ah. No way. <laughs> Send over some German chocolate. <laughs> no, I've been here. Well, I love that. I love it that um, we've got people from all over the world and that's wonderful. Anyway, with this virus, in my mind, I was traveling all over the world and, and thinking <laughs> about places I'd like to visit and and then I would look up on Pinterest photographs of these places so that I would have um, something in front of me that I could copy and paint. So that's how, how I develop um, some of the paintings that I was just showing you earlier. Okay. All right. Well, if everybody is about ready, what I can do is just, let's see. It, is everybody about ready to start with their chalk drawing? Okay, I see a few yeses. And Miss Angela, I think since um, the class is being recorded, 
the girls can yes. visit it and go back and go and back go, so and we review don't run out of time as far as the instruction goes sounds great so if you look at this painting do you see about in the middle of the way is the horizon line right do you see that there's this field in the back here and the blue of the mountains right so take a take your chalk and be very brave and even if it's a little wobbly just draw a line straight across straight across your canvas with your chalk like that and that is this line up here this line that goes through the houses right that's your horizon line we call it the horizon line because that's where the horizon is in our imaginary landscape okay so and then, then you see that there's three hills right this one in the foreground this one right behind it and this one right behind this one right and later when we paint this we will make the shading go from dark to light so for now we just want to put these three hills here they look kind of like i don't know like sleeping bears just the backs of them right so about half between the horizon line and the bottom halfway is the first hill and just make a slope that goes downward like that just ends right there and you can go over it a few times if you like just to make it nice and smooth then comes the second hill back here and it's slightly below the horizon line maybe like an inch just eyeball it you don't have to measure it okay and you do the same thing you did before and you just do a rounded slope like that that meets the first slope okay everybody doing okay so far not freaking out yet <laughs> all right and then the last hill it's just slightly higher than this hill and you could start here if you like and just bring it across like that it's just a small little hill back there just below this horizon All right, and then I'm going to do the mountains. Just gonna do sort of a zigzaggy, jagged little line that goes like, maybe like that. Whatever mountains you like, not all just the same height, but like maybe a little lower here, two zigzags and a little straight and higher make it a little bit random because if you make it too much the same zigzag that's boring does that help you so a little bit higher then lower then a little straight then another zigzag then maybe not a zigzag then a dip then a valley and there you go all right so if so does everybody know that if you don't have a green you can mix a green very easily with blue and yellow right but before we mix the green for these hills and for the field back here i want to put down this mountain range and you can use the same blue just this time don't put any white into it 
And for those who haven't put any white into it, you could make it a little darker by adding red, which makes it purple, right? When you add red to blue, it makes it purple and it'll also be a little darker. All right, so I'm not gonna use my big brush that I used before. I have, a, I have a nice big brush that covers the whole canvas. I'm gonna use a little bit smaller brush. So if you have something that's about this size, great. And I don't know if you all know the difference. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of variety in brushes, but the biggest difference is a flat brush and a round brush. And a round brush has a little bit of a tip to it and is round. This, this part that holds the, all the hair is round where the, a flat, while a flat brush is flat like that and it's kind of square looking. This is good for doing a lot of straight back and forth. This is good if you have some curves. So let's do our hills with this round brush. And before I even dip into my paint, which is right here, my blue paint, I wet my brush. I always wet my brush first. And then I dip it in the blue, pick up some of that blue. And if you want your mountain range to be a little purple looking, you just add a little red to it, okay? And then I'm just gonna make this mountain range pop. I just stick that blue right there. Just like that. Everybody okay so far? So this is my, these are my far away distant mountains. And they, they go right along this horizon line and right up to the range. And see if you make it a little bit like up and down and different, it's not so boring, right? If you make your mountain range all the same and the same distance between the peaks, that's boring. And I'm gonna pretend, well, by, by the color of the trees, it's spring, right? I'm gonna pretend this is spring and, but you could do this very easily, this very same landscape, you could have it be um, a fall and then you would just maybe change the, the foliage on the trees, make them all that pretty orange and brown tones and, or you could make it a winter scene and you could have like a little bit of snow back there on the mountains, right? And you could just have the branches be completely bare. All right. All right, that's, that's pretty, right? Now, Let's see. If you have white at this point, you could also do some clouds. If you don't have white, don't worry about it. But I'm gonna use a little bit of white And just put a little bit of a few clouds in here. Nothing big. And maybe there's not a cloud in the sky in yours. And you can just leave it as is.
And remember, you'll come over this too with your trees and your pink foliage there. So some of these clouds are gonna be covered up. Okay, not necessary, but pretty, right? All right. So we need a very light green and a very dark green. Is anybody there that doesn't have green at all? Ah, slow down, okay. <laughs> I tend to go fast, yes. Hang on, I need to figure out how I can read all of your all of your answers and questions. So, so far, I'm very happy with this little mountain ridge. It looks very pretty. And it looks like it's way, way, way back there, right? In the distance. So this is good, this is gonna dry and you can fan it again with your paper towel a little bit so that it dries. All right, so the field back here is a lighter green than the hills, right? So we're gonna mix with yellow mostly yellow and blue, a sort of a light green like that. So usually when I don't want my green to be very, very dark, I just put a touch of blue, tiny bit of blue. I put it on the tip of my brush and usually I like to work with a palette knife. I don't know if y'all are familiar with a palette knife, but it looks, this is, a, this is a palette knife. It looks like a flat knife or a cake decorating tool, right? And it kind of is, does just that. What, what, it, what you can use it for is pick up the paint and mix it and then squash it together. But I wasn't sure if everybody had something like that. So we can mix, we can mix just as well with with a paintbrush. So I'm gonna pick up some of this blue, just a little bit, okay? See this tiny bit? And I'm gonna mix it into my yellow. And I'm going to make a mostly yellow green. little bit. So you see how you don't need a lot of blue to make this yellow turn green, right? You need just a titch of that to make it this color. All right. And sometimes if you want to make it look like it's further away, you can add a little bit of white and it'll make it a little bit less bright. Okay. But since not all of you have white, we're going to skip that. But I will show you what 
adding a little white will do. Just makes it a little bit more muted. Can you tell? Between these two? I don't know if you can tell really well online like that. But anyway, okay. We're gonna use this color that we just mixed on this little bitty stretch right here, right below this mountain and right above these two hills, okay? Just right in this part right here. a little bit different this color. I use a different yellow this time. That's okay. I still like it. It's a pretty field. So you just go back and forth like this. Acrylic is lovely because it's it's so smooth. And if you don't have acrylic paint and you're using crayons, just use a, a light green to cover this area. All right. Hmm. Every time I paint this, it always turns out a little bit different depending. Sometimes it also depends on what brand of paint I use. They're not always, even though it says it's yellow, the brands make different yellows. And there's different yellows. There's a lemony yellow and there's more of a medium cadmium yellow and there's ochre and well anyway, you get it. There's a lot of variety. All right, I still like it a lot. It's very pretty. All right. Is there anybody out there that does not have green? All of you have green? That's good, fantastic. Here's my green and we're gonna use it. <laughs> All right. So let's put a little bit on a plate like this. And I'm going to make two greens. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the blue and the yellow before, and I'm gonna mix a lighter version of this green. So let me bring some yellow over here. Dip my brush just a titch in this. Ms. Angela, they're asking if you could slow down just a little bit. Okay. Sorry. So basically you're just mixing it into your yellow. I'll, I'll just hold this up till you all catch up. It's interesting. It's almost the same green as the one I mixed before, isn't it? So we'll have two, two greens and with these two greens, we will tackle the hills. And I'll wait just a minute till everybody catches up with those two, two greens. We need a light green and a dark green. And it, it doesn't have to be exactly like this. Just that one's darker and one's lighter. Oh, I just saw somebody wants to do a sunset. You go right ahead, girl to put that sun right back there, right? Because, well, that, this is the other thing that's interesting about this. So there's, the sun's gotta be back here somewhere because the, there's sh shadows that are being cast by the trees, right? This way. So the sun's setting back here someplace. Well, 
in my case, I didn't want to put a sunset back there because I just, I just wanted to show the sky and the, and the mountains, but you can definitely put a sun back there and it'll still look very credible and very, very realistic. But then you might even have to do something with the, the sky, maybe add a little bit of pink tones in there, you know, the kind of colors that you see in a sunset on the, in the sky, right? You can't just plop a sun in, the, in there. You, you'd have to make it, you know, sort of pink and maybe some purple tones. The colors that you see that you usually see when, when the sun's setting. All right. So we've got our two greens and we're gonna get started now, okay? So in order to make it look like these hills are one after one behind the other, we got to use a little bit of a shading technique. All right, so let's pick up some of the darker green. And we, we will paint the bottoms of these hills. Okay. Just paint it to about here. All right, so like that. And you wanna do the same thing up here with this hill, just above this hill. You just wanna put a little bit of that dark green in there. All right. And you want to do the same thing for this hill. So cover this corner right here. All the way to the beginning of this hill. Trace, trace the top of it with your brush. Just go like this. So I'm just edging my way up a little bit on this hill. That's so funny, I, I can hear a bird. <laughs> Whose bird is that? Essentially, it might be my backyard. I need to mute myself, but do you want to be a part of the nature? No, I want to be part of the nature. It's very soothing. <laughs> All right. I'll let everybody catch up to this. Now, in my inspiration piece, I, I use professional paint. I, so I use some paint that is, that is a little bit more expensive but it has more pigments and I had a green that that's called phthalo green and phthalo green is very intense and very dark so that's that color right here now the green that I'm using today is just a basic color that most people have for green which is fine it still gives that that um that look that it is and in the foreground, right? And that there's shading there. Now, if I wanted to go a little darker on this, I could add a little bit of blue to my green and mix a darker green. See, look at that. 
That makes it a little bit darker. Yeah. That's all about taste though, you know. If you're happy with it just being green, that's fine too. And if you want it just a titch darker, you can add some blue to it. But not necessary. Let's see how that makes it darker. Mix some blue into your green and you have a little bit darker green. All right, I'm going to move forward now. I'm going to use some of this mix that I made before with the green and yellow. And I'm going to place it up here. That's the top of that hill. Now, I don't see a very big difference between that and the field. So I've, I'm, I'm adding a little bit of yellow to it. Let's make that pop a little. And Ms. as I'm doing- It looks like Sophia has a question to you. Yes. What's the question? I don't see any question. So, Sophia raised her hand, so I guess that she has a question. Oh, how does it work though? How do I have, how do I hear her? I think she will unmute herself. Right, Sunshine? I can't. Oh, I hear you now. Well, there you go. Oh, that works. Okay, which color of green are you using for the top of the hill? So I, so I mixed a yellow and with a little bit of green, with this green that I made. So that's what I'm using here. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And if it's very similar to your field, you could even add a little white to it, see? Make that pop. So we're gonna make the top of those hills, make them all the same, okay? So we've got the top and the bottom, the top and the bottom. The top of this hill, the first hill, does that make sense to you all? Sunshine, do the girls have lunch after this class? Christina is asking. Yes, yes. we do. Thank you. All right. So we've got the bottom of this hill and the top of this hill the bottom of this hill and the top of this hill, the bottom of this hill and the top of this hill, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. So now we have to fill in the in between. So we can slowly bring in more of the green. And come up with the green and mix a little bit of this yellow into it and slowly shade it upwards. Sort of in an umber like fashion. So it's shading and mixing with each other. 
You see that? So I'm just mixing the two, the green and the yellow together to make a smooth hill. That's the bottom of the hill. That's top of the hill. And that's in between. Right? So that's this hill. I'm going to do the same thing here. We'll put some green down, pick up some green. And pick up some of the mixed green and start mixing those together on the canvas. It, this is also a technique called wet in wet. So you're mixing two wet colors together on the canvas, wet in wet. You're just moving it back and forth like this until the two colors combine. So you've got hill one, hill two, and we still have this one to do. So pick up some green, same way as we did the others. Put your green down, it's nice and wet. All right? And then pick up some of your mixed green and bring it right in there and just use your brush to mix them together in the middle. There you go. All right. And sometimes I'll adjust a few things a little bit just to make them look nice. Right down here, I wish it was a little bit darker. I'm gonna use some of my blue because we learned that if you add a little blue, it makes it darker, right? Magically makes it darker. There, I like that hill a lot better. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I want it just to be a little bit darker. right in here where the shade is. Because I know this hill just drops off right there. Pretty? All right. How's everybody? Does it look like a landscape yet? <laughs> I just saw someone say my hill doesn't look anything like a hill. What do you mean? <laughs> I'll demonstrate one more time right here. So you had your lighter yellow, that was on top, right? And then rinse your brush and you have your darker green below. And then as you come up with your green, dip your brush in your lighter yellow, pick that up and start blending the two colors together to make it smooth, a transition, if you will, between the lighter green and the lighter yellow. And just go back and forth with your brush like this and kind of curve it a little bit so that it looks like a hill, right? Don't make it straight back and forth, but a little curve. There you go. How's that? Everybody still with me? All right, so this up here above should be nice and dry, right? Yeah. 
everything above the hills should be dry. So we can use our chalk to draw our houses and to draw our trees. All right, so let's take the chalk again. And be careful not to put to lean with your hand into your hills because those are still wet and they need to dry, right? All right. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six trees, right? So let's start with the first one. The first one is standing on the first hill. You see that? Sits right there on the edge, goes all the way up and then has two, two like a fork right there. So we're gonna take our chalk. Hmm, you know what? We can't start with the first one because this hill is still wet. <laughs> we're gonna start with the second tree, okay? So leave a little space for the first one. And you're starting with the second tree. And it's just a line that goes up. Just do this. And then there'll be another tree, but the second, the third tree is sitting on this hill, on hill number two, and that's still wet. So we're gonna skip that tree too. Everybody's still good hanging in there? All right, I'm gonna simplify a little bit. And we're going to pretend that this house is not existing. We're just going to have two houses, okay? Because we only have a half hour left and we still have to do the trees and we still have to do the shade. So we're going to just skip this house, okay? And we're going to draw this house. And in fact, let's skip this whole two houses and just do this house, okay? So let's see, we've skipped this tree, we've painted in this tree, we've skipped this tree, we're skipping all these houses. This tree is sitting also on the first hill, so we're gonna pass on this one for now. And then this tree is next. And there's two trees right here that are sitting right on top of this hill, and in between is the house. So draw your first hill, I mean your first tree, and then draw another tree. And in between, we're going to place a house. Now, how do you draw a house? Hmm. Very easily. You just go a little triangle up here on a little square this way, right? And then the house extends to the back, it's a little bit, this rectangle is a little bit bigger than the square, right? And then the roof is the same length, these two, this line right here and this line right here is the same length, and then it comes down like that. And these two lines are parallel to each other. So we paint it right on top of our mountain ridge, which is fine. In the original piece, my mountains were a little bit higher, but that's okay. I don't, I'm not fussed if it's a little different. Are your hills almost dry? Not quite? All right, so then we'll, we're gonna start on the house, this house, okay? And I don't know if you can see this, but 
this ha this side of the house is lighter than this side because this one's in the shade, right? This is a light purple and this is a dark purple. And the way to mix purple, as I said before, is red and blue. Now, if you don't have red and blue, I mean, if you don't have purple, you can mix it. But if you have purple, which I do, then you just use purple and a little bit of white to make this lighter one and the darker one also a little bit more white for that. So does everybody have purple or shall we mix it? Does anybody not have purple? Mix, okay, good. All right, so we need a little bit of blue. Yikes, my blue does not want to come out. There we go. And a little bit of red. Now, when you go between colors, make sure you really wash off your brush well. Because you don't want to have any green or yellow in your pretty purple, right? All right, so I've washed my brush really nicely. I'm going to use a little titch of blue, tiny bit of blue, into my red. Oh, not enough, a little bit more. Can you see how that makes purple? Makes a pretty purple, right? So if you want your purple to be a little bit more bluey, then add a little bit more blue to it. All right, now this is pretty dark, right? Can you tell how dark that is? So I would use this to outline my roof and for the windows. For that, it's, pretty, it's a pretty dark, lovely purple. Now the two walls though, they're not this dark, right? They are lighter. And I need two shades of purple, one really light and one a little bit darker. And I'm sorry for the person who doesn't have white because I don't know that you can mix a lighter purple without white. Uh, alternatively, you could maybe paint one of the, this wall in red and this wall in purple and that way they st stand out from each other. Okay, so this darker purple is all really fun and well. Now we're gonna use your white and make a middle tone. Look at that pretty, it's like mauve, isn't it? Whew. Oh, I like this color. So that's the middle color and then even lighter, for the lightest wall. And you don't need a lot of paint for those two parts of the house, okay? But you need enough to cover them. So do you see the three different tones of purple? All right. And I just used the same brush and just kept going in that direction. All right, so we're gonna take this light, yet yeah, light purple and we're going to cover the front of this house. Lovely. All the way to the bottom of that hill. And the minute that you did that, doesn't it make it look like the house is now on top of the hill and this is 
really behind it. It didn't. It? And this is where a round brush comes in handy because you can get into that little corner up there and, and hit that with paint. Hmm, I'm really happy with that. Rinse the brush and then Chloe go with your asking, next. Um, Miss Angela, Chloe is asking to wait a second. Okay. Just to catch up a little bit. I know we're limited in time, but. No problem. Girls have been really, really active. Paint. Yeah. I you know, I'm, I'm really impressed because I'm doing something that I do with my adult students, you know? So you guys are are really hanging in there well. I'm very impressed. This is a, a higher level art class for, for you all. <laughs> and I'm sure the speed is keeping you on your toes, right? <laughs> all right, so take the middle purple and fill out this rectangle, the side of the house, right? Now, the beauty of this acrylic paint is you can cover whatever is in the back. There you go. Fantastic. Is Angela, oh, we have a joke on the screen. We have what? Leanne says her house kind of looks like an outhouse. <laughs> Love it. Being honest, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't have to look like a palace. It could be an outhouse. It could be like a little cottage or a little, um, I don't know, <laughs> mountain retreat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, here's the beauty. Once this class is over, you can go back and add a few more details, you know, like you can make it a little bit more elaborate, or you can even add these two houses on the side, you know? Just use your chalk and draw it in and then fill it out. Yes. yes. But one house is plenty, right? This is a lo very lonesome Girl Scout as having her own little uh, time out, out in the countryside, right? Away from the virus. <laughs> <laughs> Flying Finn and I would go there, right? Oh, absolutely. In a flash. In a flash. <laughs> With right, our masks that's, on. That's, that's right. With our masks on. And we would put our little folding chairs right here and watch the sunset. All right. So to get this color of the roof, you could either... Well, I, I picked like an, a, an orange. I, I just thought it was pretty against the purple. But you could also just make it a red roof, you know, that, that would look pretty too. If you want to make orange, how do you mix orange? Anybody? I think some of you might already know this trick, right? You mix red and yellow, you get your orange. Pick up some of that yellow and just a ditch of red. Oh, that was too much red. Look at that. Didn't even make a difference. Red is a powerful color. Much stronger than yellow. All right. Well, I'm going to make sort of a not as light a, a color as that one, a, a red roof. And again, you can use your brush, the tip of it, so you can get that corner. Now you may have to go over it a couple times because of the blue in the background. I can still see my mountain range through the roof. <laughs>
So sometimes with acrylics, they are a little on the transparent. They're not always very, um, they don't cover everything. You have to go over things twice. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of that mountain still peeking through. But I'm gonna let that dry before I go over it again. All right, how are your hills feeling? Are they dry? Mine's about dry. Still wet? Okay, we'll wait on the rest of these things then. All right, we're gonna go back to the dark purple. Now, you can stay with the same round brush if you have a good control, or you can go with a smaller brush, also a round brush. And Miss Angela, um, Mariah has a question. Yes. What's the question? Can Mariah unmute? Um, so I'm like, my red is dark. Is that Your okay? What? Your red is dark? Yeah. My red is dark. Yes. Okay. Well, sometimes, I mean, have you looked at houses? Some houses have dark roofs, some have lighter roofs, some have gray roofs, some have brown roofs. So it's all in your own imagination. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And Christina, would you like to ask Miss Angela um, about your color mixes? You commented that it's not working. Christina, are you with us? Oh, I can't unmute. Uh, Sunshine, can you unmute Christina? I'm still looking for her, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> don't be frustrated if you don't get the same colors. Now just look at this version and this version. Can you tell they're different colors? Even the purples are different, right? And the blues are different and the greens are different. So it depends what colors you're using. Maybe you don't have the exact same ones I do. And maybe- well, I tried to um, like water it down, but like it, it's, it's really hard for me to like get the, how you're doing it because I don't it's know. Watered? It's watered? Yeah, like it's it's different. Like I can't make it the same. So you you put too much water in it? Um I don't I don't know. Like it's like yeah, I think so cuz it's like not like showing up on the paper. Okay. So add a little bit more paint then to make it a little thicker. Does that work? Maybe okay, I'll try that. You can do it, Christina. <laughs> we believe in you. <laughs> yeah, so acrylics are an interesting medium. They're very versatile and you can do a lot with them. And I don't know if we'll even get to it where you can use a fork and just drag it through some of the paint if you apply it thicker, you know? But if you water it down a lot, obviously this is not gonna work as well. Um, but if you add some more paint to your watery color, you can thicken it up again. And it doesn't have to look exactly the same as mine. All right, I'm gonna use a smaller brush and I'm gonna pick up some of the darker purple that I mixed earlier. And I'm going to trace that roof. And so here's something that I learned too, and some artists will use a stick that they use to lean on like that so that they can steady their hand, right? 
but I just use the, my little pinky just to steady my hand so that I can draw a straight line like that. So I'm just going all along this rooftop. And all along this bottom part of it. Like that. And then I'm gonna use this same dark purple to put a couple windows in there. And you don't have to do the same windows as me, but I kind of like one right here in the middle and a couple on the side. To me, this looks like a little cabin in Italy someplace. Wouldn't we all like to be in Italy today? <laughs> yes. All right, it really bugs me that I can see the mountain through that roof. So I'm gonna go over it one more time with my red and yellow mix. <sighs> ah, that's better. Now I'm happy. I saw somebody said something. It reminded them of what? Gotta be able to see West this. Virginia. West Virginia. Oh, wouldn't we like to be there? It is pretty with those hills, right? I can see where you would think that. Yeah. Oh, very nice. All right, now let's get to the trees real quick here. We only have 15 minutes and I bet everybody's stummy is rumbling. Okay, we gotta put one tree over here on the first hill. So just go place that in here. Then we already have our second tree right there. And then the third tree right here. And the fourth tree is standing on this first hill right here, okay? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six trees. Now we're gonna cast a shadow, which, which is so cool because it makes it look like there is actually light coming down this way and it looks like a landscape, right? There's also shading behind the houses. You can also go back with your green and add a little shading here. And we're going to show the shading right now with our piece of chalk, right? So do you see this angle? It's pretty much the same angle for all the trees, right? And for the house as well. So we're gonna go on the bottom here and draw the shadow. Go to the bottom of this tree, and same angle, draw the sh shadow. Go to the bottom of this tree, same angle, draw the shadow. Go to this tree, same angle, draw the shadow. So they're kind of like long L's. Do you see that? And this tree as well, another shadow. And the house has got a shadow going this way. And then the last tree has a shadow back here. I wouldn't even worry about that. All right, so we're gonna get to our color brown. Okay. So we've got our red, yellow, and if we add blue to that also, it makes a pretty ugly brown. So in order to get brown or an ugly color, 
just mix all the primary colors together and you get a, not, a pretty dark brown, okay? So yellow, red, blue, about same amounts of each, and you get brown. Oh, I think I need a little bit more yellow in mine. We're gonna use that for our trees. Oops, maybe that was a little too much yellow. Yeah. Oh, that was a little too much yellow. Well, yeah, I'm just gonna go a little darker on that. Add a little bit more blue, add a little bit more red. And you get a nice brown. <sighs> right now, I wish I had a crayon instead. Whoever has the crayons is, just needs to pick up a brown crayon. All right, so that's not too bad. So you're going to put in those trees right now. One. And remember, you're just going to, to the top of that hill. And it doesn't have to be dead straight. Trees are not super straight, right? And you can even add a few forks in there, or branches forking off, right? Some tall trees. All right. All right. There's your six tree stems, and they need to go all the way to the bottom of each of the hills. Like that. All right, now you can use the same brown or you can go back to your dark green. I think we'll go back to the dark green. So rinse your brush really well after the brown. It's Angela. Yours it, didn't turn brown. What? Yes, Chloe said that hers didn't turn brown. So can you just quickly go over how did you make that brown? Yes. So I took the yellow and the blue and the red, almost equal parts, and I just picked up some of it and I mixed it together in the middle here. And it makes, makes a good mushy, dark brown. And you may have to add a little red or a little yellow, just just so that you get it to where you want it. But those three colors make brown, you see that? It's do orange and green. I don't understand do orange and green. What do you mean? Orange is easy, orange is just yellow and red. So if you mix these two together, oh, I see what you're saying. Make orange and then add blue and you, yes, that makes brown, yes. And green and red makes brown as well, which makes sense because yellow and blue makes green plus red makes brown. Okay, so we made, made our trees. I'm gonna use the dark green to cast the shadow, okay? Just gonna trace my chalk lines on the, on the hill.
You see that? And then there's this darker part, the shadow of the house. It's a real long shadow because it is a sunset, right? We've all decided this is a sunset. It could also be a sunrise, I suppose, but we're not up that early. Well, there we go. That's the last one. So that all looks like a shadow now, right? Doesn't it? Now you can go back over it later with a little bit more darkness because see how dark it is in the inspiration? I didn't make it quite that dark, did I? Also, when you finish, don't forget to use a paper towel, a wet paper towel, and you can erase the chalk lines if there's still some left. All right, so really it doesn't matter what color you use up here. You can make these all be green leaves or you can make it fall and have oranges and, and autumn colors, you know, in there. Or you can do like what I did, which I was sort of more into the spring colors at, the, at that moment. And I, and I mixed a pink by using red and white. And sometimes it doesn't turn quite this pink. This is more of a fuchsia. So if you have fuchsia, that's even better. But green leaves looks pretty too up here. Or no leaves, you could just do all the branches, you know? Maybe all the leaves have already dropped. Whatever tickles your fancy. But we're gonna do what, we, what I did in, in the inspiration and I'm gonna mix a little bit of red and white to make it pink. Okay, I just see now, still frustration in making brown. It won't look like the brown that you buy from a tube. It, you know, it's like a homemade brown, but that's okay. It's, have you, have you tried adding the different colors to see if you can get it? If it looks a little bluey, add a little yellow. If it looks a little too yellow, add a little, it looks more like purple. So add a little yellow. When it looks a little more like purple, it means that there's more Yes, you can make red leaves. <laughs> you can make anything you like. <laughs> it's your imaginary, dreamy escape into the countryside. Okay, so if, it, but getting back to the brown, if it looks like you've mixed a purple, add more yellow. All right, so I'm gonna make my leaves pinky though. I like that pink inspiration. So I'm just going to mix some red and white and I'm just going to I'm just going to go like this as if it has like little leaves hanging down just like that. And I'm going to vary it up a little bit with light and dark so it's not all the same. So it looks like a real tree. And leave a little bit of the blue peeking through because the leaves do tend to do that. So do you see what I'm doing? I'm just stroking it back and forth like this, my brush over it. And then I, I'll dip between the pink and the red without rinsing my brush. If you're working right now, stop working and watch a little bit. See how I'm also leaving some of the blue? It's kind of more interesting that way, right? Like you can see through the, through the trees. And I'm just swooshing my brush back and forth and 
let's see, I would like, I think I need a little bit more red up here. So I'm gonna dip my brush in the red. And maybe a little bit more white. All right, let's work on this one. Pick up a little bit of red. And a little bit of pink. These are just imaginary trees. So you don't have to draw every single leaf. There's sort of an impressionistic style. Uh-oh. Are we still struggling with the brown? If you've got a gray, that's okay. Sometimes tree barks can look gray. They don't, they don't all look brown. They can be a little bit on the gray side. They sometimes can be a little bit on the bluey side, on the green side. There's a lot of variety. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Just have fun with it. And then that is about it. You can pick up some red and just give it a little bit more shape. Ooh, very impressionistic, huh? Like it? I love that, Miss Angela. Okay. And then, so, okay. Actually, I kind of like it with just the one house. Look at that. And if you notice, you know, you can use your brush to create a little movement, you know, like the wind is coming through there. Sort of like Van Gogh did, you know, if you're all familiar with Van Gogh. He kind of did this, he, he kind of put a lot of movement in, into his paintings. There you go. But you can see how you could make this be green leaves or, or orange leaves. You could easily make this fall, right? And don't forget to leave some blue peeking out randomly because it makes it look more realistic and more interesting. See? Right? I, I kind of got carried away on this one, I mean, didn't leave a lot of blue there. But this one, I don't know if you notice the texture of it. It's a palette knife painting. So instead of using a brush, what that means is I used a palette knife and I picked up the paint and I put it onto my canvas with a palette knife. That's another form of painting. That's a lot of fun. And it creates a lot of texture, you know? apply the paint with a knife like that rather than a brush. Okay, so but for today that completes my instruction but what I will say is you can go back and you can touch up some of the areas you know for instance you could add another house here or two if you want to 
you could darken the shadow on the trees. You can add a little bit more interest, maybe a few more branches up here. You can do a lot to spruce it up, right? Mm -hmm. All right, then. Did anybody have any more questions before we say goodbye? Thank you, Miss Angela. That was amazing. Good. I'm glad. It was fun. I enjoyed you, girl. We will do a <laughs> gallery online. We'll, um, Sunshine will send us another um, Google Drive so you guys okay. can share all your pictures with us, and we'll share them with Miss Angela, too, so she can see all your beautiful creations. I would love to see how it turned out. Absolutely. How many girls were in this today? Right now it says there's 32 participants still online. I mean, I know that, you know, that's like two yeah. of me and two sunshines and stuff like that. But, yeah. um, and then I know people had to leave at certain points. So I'd say you had at least 30 or more because there's also like there's two, you know, on one of mine. And then you've got like Jojo, CP and Barbie are all on one. So you got multiples on some of them as well. So I'd say about 40 or more girls. I saw actually 54 when we started. Sweet. Oh boy, I hope they didn't just all throw in the towel and give up. <laughs> no, I think a lot of them went for lunch because we've been breaking for lunch. So I think a lot yeah. of them went to grab lunch. <laughs> well, they can look this up, right? Somebody videotape this? It's recording from the one that I'm on right now. So hopefully okay. the recording will come out good. <laughs> Cross them okay. up. Well, what I do want to mention is, and I think I already did, but you can wet your paper towel and you can go back and take out your chalk lines, okay? So don't forget to do that once the paint is dry, otherwise you're gonna get a mess. Okay, I can mention that too this afternoon if anybody has any questions. Yeah, but I think you should have knocked out your badge on this, so. Right? I so too, I think that completes the brownie painting badge, I'm pretty sure. Awesome. All right, you have a good time and enjoy the rest of your camp. Awesome. Thank you so Goodbye, much. Bye. And thank you to Flying Finn for sending your questions. <laughs> You're welcome. So lovely. Love you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. I'm checking with Merlin right now and then we'll let them know for sure. Girls, we're seeing if we can start just a tad bit later so you guys can all get lunch. I don't want anybody starving through Zumba and stuff later. Merlin said it's good to be a little bit later. So this is what we're going to do, girls. We are going to let you guys go and get lunch. I'm going to hold on. I'm gonna